Hello, welcome to another edition of Cracking Cryptic. Um, we're going to dissolve the um, diabolical Sudoku that appeared in the Telegraph on Friday now. I've not looked at the puzzle yet, just loaded it up on screen. So without further ado, uh, let's get cracking. Now, um, as usual, we're going to stick with standard notation, at least for the early part of the solve. Um, the, uh, these puzzles often do have a sting in the tail, um, which may well require us to go beyond so-called Snyder notation, um, and if so, we'll have to look at that when we get there. Um, well, there's a nice double I found there. See the one and the nine. Uh, so in, in effect, now we have six numbers now in row seven, and we have two, three, and eight to place. You can see there's an 8 down here now, so that means we can write this 8 in. Put a couple of numbers in there. This is, has to be a 2 3 pairing, so we can go 3 2 in that order. I always get a bit nervous actually. If you, if you make a good start on these puzzles, I often think that means there's an absolutely brutal sting in the tail to come, so we'll have to have a look. I've actually solve this box now. There's 3 by 3 boxes complete. Fill the five in here. Uh, and in fact, that has to be a seven. So it's a surprising amount of progress we're making now. Three here. Okay. So we're looking for two, three, and eight along there. So again, we can go eight straight in, two, three pairing into those cells. That means we've got six and seven to place here. And two, three, nine along the bottom. We can't strictly place a two because the two could go in any of the three positions here. And remember, I'm only supposed to be making notation, i.e. putting little numbers in boxes where a number can only go in exactly two positions within one of these three by three boxes in the grid. Okay, so let's see if we can make a bit more progress. Uh, I suspect it's about to get a lot harder. Nope, got another five here, look. There. Nine is locked into one of these two positions. That actually resolves the, the one and the nine in this bottom box here and allows us to make pencil mark ones into these two positions. Still can't do anything down this side though. Uh, hmm. and that, this has to be a four. Uh, this is the first bit of logic that's actually been difficult, well, not difficult, but it needed to spot something. So you can now see that in rows 4 and rows 5, we've identified the 4 as being in one of these two positions here and in one of these two positions here. Now this means that there cannot be any more 4s in rows 4 and 5. It's impossible. Uh, you can prove this to yourself by imagining what happens if, say, this was a 4. If this was a 4, this cell will be a 4, and this cell will be a 4. So that's clearly not going to work. So if we know there are no 4s in this cell, this cell, this cell, and this cell, then the 4s are limited to just two positions now in this central 3x3 three three box. And look, once we combine that with this 4 here, 
you can see this cell here has to be a 4 and we need to write that in let's immediately take a look now at the central column of the grid so you can see we need 2, 3 and 5 to place ah, that's annoying thought that might give us a number but it doesn't quite seem to so we can, we've got here though, we've got two, five and eight into these two positions, or these three positions, which means this has to be, sorry, the software's glitching, one and four. Two here. Ah, okay, yes, there's, a, there's what we might call a hidden single uh, along uh, row 6 of the grid. So you can see we need 1, 2, 5 and 6 into, uh, into this row. And if you're just scanning down, you can see 1 and 6 here, so you know this is a 2 or a 5, etc, etc. Um, but you won't spot the fact that this cell here has to be a 5 that way. And the way you need to work your brain needs to work in order to get the five here is to ask yourself uh, like individually where can the numbers one two five and six go and that would allow you to spot you've got a five here a five here and a five here so in all of the other three open positions of row six it's not possible to put a five so the only cell left where we can place a five is this cell um, and I'm just wondering if that's going to give us a chance to put any notation in. It's not four and five here. Which we definitely need to use. You can now see that's going to force this to be a seven. Um, so the only place a seven that can now go in this box. make use of the two sevens here to go oops, seven six which forces this to be a six one two three to place down here you can see this can be a one or a two this can be a one two or a three so that's a bit annoying and pencil mark the three is in up there though which we should do this cell oh we can okay so we can use um, we can use uniqueness here I think yes we can so look if we look here we have one two one two into one of these two positions and over here we have a one and a one now we can immediately therefore rule out that that there are twos in these two positions only. That would not be possible. If this configuration was true, the puzzle would have two solutions because this would be a one, this would be a one, this would be a two, and this would be two. But equally well, we could just turn that round. We could have two, two, one, one, and there would be no way of differentiating between those two solutions. Now we know all Sudoku puzzles, or all decent Sudoku puzzles, have one solution. So these two cells cannot be two. So in fact, the two is in one of those two positions. Now, if that's the case, we can scan down the grid and actually resolve the two and the three there. And that, I think, is going to finish the puzzle. So we now have three, one, to those positions. Um, there's only one place now two can go in this, this box, which is there and there. That gives us the two and the eight gives us an 8 here. This has to now be a 1. This has to be a 2, I think. Yep. We can now pencil mark the 2's that we couldn't earlier down here. And we're very nearly there. Now we can use this 1 to resolve the 1 and 2 over on this side. That has to be in that order now. And some more ones up there. Okay. Um, 
this one here allows us to pencil mark ones into those two positions which means that this is forced to be a one, that this is forced to be a four, that's got to be a four, that's got to be a five, this has got to be a five, five, one at the top here, two nine to place into these two positions, that can only work if it's in that order, which means that this is two, nine, and three. And again, you can see how once you get a bit of a momentum in these puzzles, um, they can quickly fall once you find the critical step and there we go. So I think this was relatively straightforward diabolical today, certainly easier than the last few weeks with just that one uh, one little trick that we needed to use on the um, on the one and the two in these positions. Um, so I hope that was new to you and you can incorporate that into your own solving. If you enjoy these videos please do subscribe to our channel and please leave comments and also if you want particular puzzles solved do, uh, do let us know. Um, we love puzzles and if we have the time we're certainly happy to, to try and solve them on the channel and talk you through how to do them. So thanks for watching and we'll see you again next time. We'll crack in the